Hey guys, um, today we wanted to jump on and talk about coffee. Specifically, uh, if you're anything like us, you are a traveler, adventurer, but you still love your coffee. We just want to be able to share our wisdom, mostly his wisdom, working in the coffee industry for a little while. Um, long while. Long while, bringing that into <laughs> our van life. We've had to do a lot of experimenting of what it means to get a really good cup of coffee on the road. And we just want to share that with you. Hope you guys enjoy. Alrighty, so the two machines that we're talking through today are the Baletti, um, the Mocha Pot. So entry level, really cheap machine. It allows you to make really good quality um, espresso coffee. And then the second one is the Bellman CX25P. It's weird that you know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not weird. Anyway, so it allows us to make quality espresso grade coffee as well as steam milk, which was a big one for us because previously we heated milk on the stove and um, nine times out of ten, I would burn it. Claire would burn it, which is fine, but um, the milk is a huge part of coffee, making it taste incredible. Also, I think I'm bleeding somewhere. Oh. Oh, yeah. Momentary pause. Can you help me get it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back. First, we're going to talk through the Bloody because it was our first machine. It's also a very low barrier to entry good coffee machine. It's about 60 bucks. About 60 bucks and you can get them pretty much everywhere. Basically it's a three part, your water pot, your basket and your um, extraction head. Our first problem with entering into the van was the pot doesn't fit on the burner very well. It like tends to fall off. It's fallen over a few too many times and... <laughs> so we went to a camping store and you got one of these. It was just a wire rack, like a pot mat and we decided to use that to sit on there to allow the bloody to and sit it on top. Works a charm. It works perfectly. The first thing you do is fill the pot with water. Um, it's best to do hot water and to heat up the pot. We don't have hot water on tap here, so it just that would just add an extra thing. So you just fill her up with water. Most of your Baletti mocha pots will have a rim that you fill up to. If not, just to the bottom of the pressure valve here. Grab your ground coffee. At the moment, we're using um, Flying West Cheeky Monkey. Awesome blend, 60% um, organic, which is really, really awesome. You want it a nice fine grind, just a little more coarse than like an espresso grind. We use a grinder. We're not super in love with it. We'll just hide it. We'll just hide it. But um, basically you just want it really fine. About 30 grams goes into the basket. Big part of the reason we love our life. All right, cool. Just give it a light tap to even it across the whole area. And then there's no need to temp these guys you just leave it even basically so drop it in there screw on the the top and then whack her on the stove the reason why you'd use hot water in the pot is because you want the least time on the stove as you can so using hot water then you can increase the heat in there a lot faster without burning the coffee. Unfortunately, like, because we don't have hot water, we just have to leave it on there a little longer. Still works really, really well, but mm -hmm. um, it's just not as good. So when it's on there, you have it, if you have hot water, leave it on a low temperature. <laughs> it's just smoking because there's dust on the um, <laughs> this guy. So open your lid. When it starts to extract, if the lid's on top, it'll actually heat up too much and it'll burn your crema. Oh, it's coming through. All right, so that's your extraction happening. So that's, that's the happy part. Now we want to lower the heat a little bit. Yep. So you want to keep it coming out at this kind of rate. Steady, steady flow. So you can see all your crema forming on the top there and everything. And that's how you want it to continue out. It will start to splutter a little bit. So you get a little, few little spurts. Mm. That's when you turn off the heat, just starting to now. So that's at the end of the extraction. So we've turned off the heat and now we'll remove it from the stove. Careful, because it is very hot and then you run the base pot underneath cold water. cold water so you just like run the base part with some cold water and that's to reduce the temperature straight helps away reduce the temperature which then stops it burning mm -hmm. i know that much that's basically when you tip it into your cup um add your milk if you want milk or if you just want it as a long black some water that guy there will do two like three shots of coffee technically technically it's probably about two normal uh, mixed pressure shots so if you like usually a large coffee you that's usually two shots so mm -hmm. yeah we're not going to finish with that one today we're actually going to turn this slot into some ice cubes ice so we cubes. can throw it into smoothies or have iced coffee or something so we're just going to pour it into that ice tray and let it cool and then put it in the freezer all right so now that the um <laughs> the coffee's in the freezer 
It's in there. It's done. Um, first thing we do, we don't need this anymore. We almost threw that out yesterday. <laughs> so with the Bellman, moving on to the Bellman, it sits at around like $260. So a little bit of an investment, but to get the steam wand and the quality of the coffee that comes out of it, 100% worth it. So if you have got a Bellman or if you just got yours or if you're looking to get one, first thing that you do, take this little red thing out, mm -hmm. flip it over and put it down. <laughs> That's literally, I don't know why they designed it like that, but basically that increases the seal on the basket, makes better coffee. That's the first thing you do. So I've been playing around with all the different water measurements, coffee measurements, grinds, pressure that it actually hits. I've found a pretty good ratio for a strong coffee for two people, basically. So in here, you have different numbers, different measurements of water. Don't mind to do my job, I'm too busy learning. <laughs> so you fill the water up to just like probably two or three mil under the six. For how many cups of coffee? For two cups of strong coffee, which is how we like it. We like strong. So what would they do if they wanted something a little more chill? If they wanted like a one shot? Three, you'll get two um, single shots out of it. Perfect. So once you've filled your water up to your desired- Image. You get given a basket and a reducer. So that goes in here and it reduces the um, amount of coffee grinds that you put in. There's a lot out there that's saying that the reducers do nothing. I have actually found that the reducer helps a mm, lot a with lot, yeah. using like um, smaller amounts of coffee. So that is about 55 grams. That's about um, really good for 28 grams and for two strong coffees. I haven't done much with the, the small basket, but- um, It's not one human, but if you're one human. For one human, it might work. I'd probably play around with it a little bit, but with the reducer in at the large scale, it's good with 28 grams of finely ground coffee. If you don't have a scale, sort of just fill it to the top. You're just putting the grinds in there as it goes down the hole. So just put your thumb over the top and toss her in there. Nice and even all the way around. So tapping the sides of the basket can really help distribute the coffee really well and it also compacts it a little bit. If you're using the full 50 grams, the full basket, you can actually use the reducer to temp. I just use my thumb on this one just to pat it down a little bit because it doesn't need a bunch of temping, but a little bit doesn't hurt. Which to the non-coffee folk, if you're anything like me. Temping is just applying pressure to the top of the ground coffee. So you also get a bunch of these little filter papers. It helps to create um, a really nice like pour from the head and it keeps the coffee tasting a lot cleaner. So also, fun fact, just looked it up. Yeah. I didn't tell Jake this. It actually helps reduce cholesterol. So oh. there's a different thing that comes out of the coffee when you don't have a filter. Oh, there you go. Fun fact. I did not know that. And What's... so it helps capture that. There you go, that's perfect. So after you've got your, you just drop it in, nice and easy. Um, you whack your head on. You can set it up however you want. It's really nice, you can rotate your head wherever. Just what like a regular do, head. Yes, you can rotate it anywhere. <laughs> For our stove top and the plate that we put it on, I like to have it like this. Door up. And this is where the coffee comes out. Yeah. In case anyone was unaware. Get on really tight, do up all your knobs and turn her on. That can be on high heat because it's just heating the water. The, the grounds are far enough away from the flame. They're not going to get burnt like in the bloody. Then basically we just watch the pressure gauge and good extraction is at two bars. So yeah, when that comes up to two bars, we're good to extract the coffee. While we're waiting, it's quite common knowledge that um, coffee obviously increases stress in the body. If you have a lot, it mm -hmm. can be a bad thing. I used to, while I was in my barista days, have a lot of coffee. Six cups turn into 10 cups and it became addictive. That kind of amount of caffeine just gives you a massive drop mm. after your spike. In moderation, coffee can actually increase a lot of really good functions in the body. I mean, you gotta do your research and look for yourself, but there is a lot of evidence for positives and like antioxidants mm. and there are, like the bean itself has nutrients as long as it's farmed well. So for example, going for a more organic coffee can be the best bet. So basically coffee is one of those big ones where when done non-organic can contain a lot of chemicals because yep. there's a lot of processing done with it. Yeah. So having a organic coffee really helps keep those chemicals out with the fact that it increases the stress in our body. Mm. We also incorporate other things and we are looking to incorporate more like adaptogens and like trying different mushrooms and whatnot. We want to try the mushrooms in with the coffee, mm. but we already have adaptogens outside of our coffee in our rituals. Mm. You can check out more of morning rituals somewhere here. We'll put a link. 
um, if you're interested in what we do throughout the morning. Basically, we introduce things to help. Correct. And I think that. that's really important when it comes to your health. You got to do you. I think at the end of the day, I've come from a place where I was like super regimented and really mm. like strict with my health and my mental health suffered. And so you got to find a balance. Like if that means for you, you make one really beautiful cup of coffee a day. Which is what we do, guys. And then maybe take a few days break and mix it up with a turmeric or a matcha. Mm. Do that. That's my message from me yeah. to my 20 year old brings, self. It brings myself a lot of joy to have coffee obviously i spent a lot of time around coffee and i know a good coffee and i can create a really good coffee it brings me a lot of joy to have coffee so to cut that out of my life i did it for a little while i don't love it no joy <laughs> no joy and we're all here for joy more joy yeah um so that's pretty much it flying west also do do a organic blend which we're not using today it's very good we're not at all sponsored or affiliated we just genuinely love their coffee they do great stuff and they're really cool. Shout out to cool people and supporting small businesses. Hell yeah. So as we reach um, two bars of pressure on the gauge, because we have a gauge there, when you hit it, you can turn your plate off, turn your burner off, whatever. And then we start to extract our coffee, which is from this head here. Just undo your nozzle just a little bit and you'll start to extract it out. So you want a nice like pour, just like a solid stream coming up for a little while. A lot of people separate your shots straight up. I don't like to do that just simply because a shot will taste different depending on when it comes out of the head. So the initial shot will be more acidic and then the later shot will be more bitter. So to get a nice balanced shot, you want the whole thing to come out into the one shot. So adjusting your nozzle as the um, stream increases or decreases, just to keep it consistent, will really help your crema and really help the taste of the coffee. So when you're coming to the end of the shot, it'll start to splatter. You wanna reduce the amount of splattering that you get, just simply because that will reduce your crema and it'll be a more bitter taste to the coffee. We don't want a bunch of that. We want a little bit to balance out the, the shot, but that's about it. <laughs> so then we've got our coffee in there. And then as I said, I'll have it in the one jug and then split it just solely because it balances out those flavors really a lot better. And if you pour onto the side of the cup, you'll keep your crema intact. All right, there we go. Then moving on to the milk, we wanna turn our plate back on again. We wanna increase the pressure to about three bars. We have been doing some experimenting with different alternative milks because we don't drink um, cow's milk. What we've found is this So Good Brewster's Oat is really good to texture tastes really good and doesn't have a bunch of crap in it so we always look at our ingredients which all the legendary people do does not want to look there look there so yeah it doesn't contain a bunch of crap in it which is really good so there's no like thickening agents and all that kind of crap that you don't want this one's oat so it has like oat and oat flour which helps the thickening and so we tried a bunch of different other things as well like your bonsois are really good both almond and soy they're both really good. In case uh, you didn't know that almond yeah. exists because it's really good. Then once it's at three, purge the steam one until it gets down to about two bars. So that'll get rid of your wet steam, which makes really crappy froth. So you want nice dry steam and that's how we get it for the first cup. We use like a 360 mil jug. So just cause I like little jugs, takes a little bit more to get used to and to build froth but they're much better for creating latte art in any jug. When you fill the jug, basically you want the milk just to come just below the, um, the bottom of the spout. And that allows um, enough room for you to texture the milk, stretch the milk. See, when you're steaming the milk, it creates a vortex. It gives room for that vortex. Alrighty, now I usually don't use a thermometer, so I don't have a good one. Usually you can get one that'll clip onto the side. Basically, you wanna get the um, steam one in there, just so it's covered. Turn on your knob. Start getting that nice vortex of the milk with a slightly tilted jug. You want to steam until it's about 40 degrees. And then when it reaches 40 degrees, that's when you start texturing the milk. To texture, just lower your jug a little bit. and It'll start making that little kiss noise. That's when you're stretching the milk to make froth. And we want to do that till about 60 degrees. Turn that off, turn him off too. And always do what I don't do, clean the wand. Clean the wand. <laughs> Give it a nice clean and purge, purge to get the milk out of it. So you tap it once or twice on the bench just to get rid of the large bubbles mm -hmm. and then give it a swirl to polish the milk. And then that's how you'll get your nice glossy milk. And if you don't have a thermometer? Um, go buy one. Also, you kind of need to get a, um, a milk frothing thermometer because thermometers, normal thermometers aren't as sensitive and they're just not as quick response. 
basically. So um, go buy a frothing thermometer if you want to get used to frothing milk. Beautiful, if you could see. All right, so um, latte art obviously comes down a lot to practice. Hundreds of hours of practice has gone into creating art like that. It's okay, it's not so, the best. There's still plenty of room for improvement. Don't be sad if you can't get this straight um, away. And be awesome, send us photos if you do. Awesome but basically, <laughs> good milk that's nice nice and um, glossy. And also just having a smooth pour and a smooth hand. And when you're wanting to add white into the crammer, you just give it a little bit more and that'll push the froth out a little bit more. It's basically mm. the deal. And then just YouTube a bunch of different how to do swans, how to do hearts, how to do everything. It's really good. And now that the only thing that's left is to drink. <laughs> so, cheers, eh? Mm. Enjoy. All right, so we're gonna go and um, enjoy our coffee. So obviously that is the um, best way that we've found to make good coffee on the road. Me personally, I've been in Bristol for quite a few years. I think it's upwards of eight years. I've had a lot of experience, but um, I'm still learning, still practicing. And so um, if you guys make good coffee or know a really good way to make coffee, tag us in a post. We always love seeing, love hearing and connecting to you. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and we'll um, see you in the next one. Cheers. Enjoy.